Hello and welcome to OpenSplice DDS Hands-On Getting Started Windows Version Part 2. My name is René Torenbeek and I'll be doing this presentation for you. In this video, I'm going to show you how to build and run the OpenSplice DDS ping pong example. And I will show you how to inspect what is going on in the middleware. The OpenSplice DDS installation comes with a set of examples. The first thing I will do here is create a local copy of those examples so that I can start playing around with them. I do that using the xcopy tool. Referring to the OpenSplice installation directory here. I will now cd into the examples directory. dcps standalone. I'm doing the Java version ping pong example. Here we see, among other things, a ping pong.idl, which, which is a file that contains the definition of the data types. It's an interesting file to start with, so let's take a look. IDL is the, is the language used for defining the different data types that are distributed using DDS. Here we see five different types starting with the ping pong min message that only contains two simple longs called block and count. Ping pong is a simple example that sends out a message from the application ping. The message is received by pong and pong on its turn will re return the message to the middleware where it is picked up by ping. Ping pong allows you to send back and forth different kinds of messages and you see all these message types defined here. So the minimum messages for a simple test sequence messages to show how fast sequences are being ping-ponged, string messages, a fixed message that contains a different set of types, and an array message that contains all different kinds of arrays. Finally, there is a quit message that is used for quitting the application. Whenever an application receives a quit message, it will stop. All we have to do to build the application is call the build.bat batch file. What we see here is that the batch file it will invoke the ideal compiler that comes with OpenSplice. And after that, it will compile the code that was generated by the ideal compiler. And finally, it will compile the applications ping and pong. It's interesting to take a look at what exactly is happening in build.bat. First of all, there are some directories being created, and then we see here the invocation of the IDL preprocessor using the language Java standalone version, and it's cd'd into two subdirectories, so referring back to ping pong IDL, that's two directories up. After that, it will compile the generated Java code, and finally, it will compile the application Java code. It's quite straightforward. Now let's see what happens if I run the example. First of all, the OpenSplice domain is started, which basically initializes the middleware and makes it possible for applications to do the messaging. We now see a lot of numbers rolling over the screen and that's actually the results of the ping pong measurements that have been done. I will scroll back in a moment after the application has finished to show you what is actually happening. Five different types have been ping-ponged now. Finally, OpenSplice is shutting down and the test has been finished. So scrolling back to the last run that started here, we see what the columns actually mean. The two columns for indicating which block and how many samples were in that block, then round trip time, mean, min and max times, write access times, mean, min, and max, and read access time, mean, min, and max. So these are quite interesting numbers and you can easily get them by running this um, ping pong example. Let's take a look at what's inside the build script, the run script, sorry.
Then we see, after setting some helper variables, that it starts OpenSplice, it sleeps for 4 seconds, then it starts the Pong application, listening to the Pong read partition and writing into the Pong write partition. And after that, we see that after 4 seconds of sleep again, the ping application is run several times in a row. Ping, 100 blocks, each being 100 samples, different types, M is the symbol type, Q is the sequence type, S string type, etc. So here we see that the ping pong is run five times in a row. And then finally, there's a ping done using the quit topic, which we can see here. The T stands for the quit. After that, open splice is stopped and we are all done. Now, instead of stopping open splice after these ping pongs have run, I will edit, <coughs> edit the run batch file again and remove the last line to avoid the stopping of open splice. I do that because then we can start inspecting and see what's going on in the middleware. I'll run the batch file again, starting open splice again. Wait for a few seconds. The different types are sent around again. And now instead of open, stopping open splice, it keeps on running. So what I'll do now is I will start the open splice tuner, which is a handy tool. It's a Java tool and it helps us inspecting the middleware. I have to move it about a little bit. You can see how the tuner works in the video about the Open Splice tuner demo. I will go quickly now, connect to the middleware. And what we see now is that the Open Splice tuner tool has figured out that several topics have been created. And we see all the different, the six different types that we inspected in the IDL before. So these types have been discovered dynamically and the tuner tool shows them. We can inspect each of them. For example, let's inspect the fixed topic using display entity. And there we have a bunch of information fields about this topic. Its name, it has been enabled, a key list, its type name. And let's also take a look at the data type. Here, here we recognize the data type that we saw in the IDL before. The names here are a bit different because they have an internal representation. So they have different names than the IDL types, but they represent the same kind of data. So far for the OpenSplice tuner, I'll disconnect and quit now. Inspecting the middleware, we see that there's still an OpenSplice instance running, which is correct, of course, because we removed the lines from the run batch file. So let's stop everything. And that also ends the ping pong demo. The demo is available for different languages, C++ and C as well. So you can also try this in between different languages. Also running the demo between different two different computing nodes is easy. Everything I did by now was on a single laptop. Um, if you want to run this on two different computing nodes, all you have to do is start ping on one node and pong on the other node. And out of the box, everything should work fine, as long as they can see each other via broadcast. So far for this demonstration, from here on, the OpenSplice DDS tutorial and getting started manuals are good starting points. If you have any remaining questions, please feel free to contact me at the email address below. Hope to see you at the next video. Hope you in hmm. I hope you enjoyed this video and please take a look at the other videos in the OpenSplice tube.